guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Down Back Fishing. Uh, out on a new lake today and uh, just stuck our uh, fourth fish. Been out here maybe five, ten minutes. Um, but seems to have pretty good action. Uh, I'm using a Gary Yamamoto Senko in a gooseberry color. Uh, I caught it underneath this dock over here about 10, 15 feet in. Like I cast, I skipped it way under that dock. Um, but using medium light action 6.9 Veritas, uh, 6 pound, mean 10 pound uh, mono. I'm just using this little gooseberry uh, Senko with a size 2 BMC wacky hook. Um, but get back to you when we get some more fish. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. My dad just caught another smallmouth and I just caught this one. Uh, nice little guy, put up a nice fight. Um, the last smallmouth that my dad had was probably just short of a pound. Um, but I'm using this little, uh, is it, uh, probably like in a crawdad color with black flake. There's three eighths ounce, uh, bog hogs, jig head, uh, blood free jig head. Um, but caught, caught it right over in one of these lily pads over here, but we'll get back to you when we get some more fish. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Just nailed this little guy. Uh, using a little, uh, gizzit tube jig. Uh, three eighths ounce. Uh, jig head. Nice, really pretty, pretty small. I uh, caught it right over on this island. Nice little solid fish. Not huge, but uh, put up a nice fight. We'll get back to you when we get some more. Hey guys, uh, got one on. A little small one. This is our like 10th fish of the night. Um, caught way more small than the other guys. Decent little guy. Um, it, we had a really hot like first 10 minutes and then it just pretty much shut straight off. But not a bad solid little fish. Um, but we'll get back to you if we get any more. And if not, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, uh, we're just going to talk to you a little bit uh, after this video about fishing a new pond. What I do, um, what are some good tactics to going into a new pond. Uh, sorry for the uh, in frequent videos, uh, the fishing has been really slow, uh, not terribly slow, but the bites right now in the summertime are far and few between. Uh, with the fish being down in deeper water, uh, you gotta search harder for them. Uh, I've been catching them, but not as frequently as I have been. Um, but, alright, so let's get to what this video is about. Uh, fishing in a new, a new lake, uh, you just got, when I go into a new lake, I go on the internet uh, and I find maps of this lake. Uh, the, the lake, I've, I find maps and I look for offshore points, uh, drop offs, and that kind of stuff. And I research this lake. Uh, I see what kind of forage is in the lake, uh, like the structure and the bait fish and uh, the weeds and stuff, because all this uh, changes the fishing. Uh, with more gravelly bottoms, you uh, choose to fish different baits than if you were fishing, say, weedy bottoms and stuff like that. Um, when I look for stuff, for key stuff, I look for uh, water clarity, structure, depths, um, and food. Uh, food, I look on my websites that I go to, uh, a lot of the time they have uh, what kind of bait fish are in there, what kind of weeds are in there, uh, fishing pressure, that kind of stuff. And I see, are they eating alewives, are they eating uh, crop, crayfish, um, killifish, uh, smelt, that kind of stuff. And what I do is I put, make my baits, uh, I mean I organize my baits in a way that they mimic the uh, bait fish and forage in the lake. Also, uh, when you get to the lake uh, and you start catching fish, uh, look inside their mouths. Like, if they have red roofs on the ma uh, top of their mouth, that often indicates that there's lots of crayfish in there and you're going to want to throw, like, crayfish imitator uh, baits and presentations like that. Um, and then sometimes, if you look in their mouths, you can see tails and stuff. Uh, don't take it out of its mouth because that's just a bad idea. Um, you're hurting the fish. Um, just respect the fish in a nice way. And 
just look, try to see if you can see what kind of bait fish is in there. If it's like an alewife or a bluegill or something like that. Um, but just always try to figure out what kind of food is in there, and it'll help you get a lot more hits and uh, catch a lot more fish. Uh, I always bring a lot of rods with me to a new lake, uh, just to have different baits and presentations available at any time. Uh, I brought to this specific lake, uh, I think like eight rods, and I had different setups on each rod. And I was just seeing what the fish wanted, where they were. Uh, I found them, and I had a pretty good bite going on. Uh, an important key thing uh, about fishing New Lake is when you get there, look at the water, look at the shoreline, that kind of stuff. If there's a lot of rocks, then I'm going to be throwing a jig uh, like I did in the video. Um, and I look at the water clarity. Like I was throwing uh, some crankbaits uh, halfway through the trip. And since the water was murkier, uh, I was throwing a more vibrant color, uh, not natural looking presentation. But uh, the if I was going to say like a clear water lake, I would be throwing a natural like bluegill imitator, uh, alewife imitator, that kind of stuff. Uh, I throw it on, depending on the water clarity, I, I'll throw it on all different types of line. Uh, different uh, pound tests, that kind of stuff. Um, I typically will change up pretty often uh, my rods and stuff like that. Uh, I'll be fishing with one bait. If something slows down, then I'll just change to another bait, flip it in there, and try to find a pattern. Uh, finding patterns is key when fishing a new lake. Uh, but if you research your lake, locate the fish once you get there um, and know what you throw what you want to throw before you get there I guarantee you'll get um, you have a lot better luck fishing and you'll catch a lot more fish um, I hope this video is helpful and stay tuned for more videos uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on down back fishing